All right, now that the floor is all laid, the next step is gonna be working on the dome. It, the trickiest part is gonna be figuring out the spacing for the internal opening, which you want a little smaller than the external opening because the door that you put in, you want there to be a seal. So I'm still figuring out how I wanna do that. Also, the next decision point is gonna be if you're gonna start with what they call soldiers, I guess, which is when you stack the first row of bricks vertically like this. And these bricks are all cut in half. So they're four and a half by four by two and a quarter. Um, so like the first row could be like that. And then the next row would be like this, sitting on top. So that's one way to do it. And what that does is give you a bit more elevation because you're essentially starting the angle of your dome here. The other option would be to start just like this. And your first row would be laid down like that. They call this the indispensable tool. There's a couple different ways you can make this, but essentially you need a, a wheel, a piece of wheel hardware. I just took the bolt out, took the wheel off. And some, most people just use a piece of wood with a stop block on it to get your spacing. Um, I opted for a pipe clamp because I saw a video where guys like professional pizza oven makers had a metal one and it had a clamp. So I think it's super useful. I'm gonna stack some bricks on here so this thing doesn't move. I've got it centered right where I want it. So I can actually clamp the brick in there and place it where I need with one hand. And I can just let it sit and let the weight of it, the weight of it would be relatively consistent helping the mortar compress. And so I think this is just a, a better way to do it. But I've never done it before, so we'll see. I'll let you guys know how this works out, but it makes sense to me. All right, I've been going back and forth on if I'm gonna do the vertical soldiers for the first row or have them down like this. Um, and I think if you do them vertical like this, this will have to be raised up to match here. Anyways, your, your dome is gonna be up more and then start to come over. Whereas if you start with a base layer like this, it's gonna be a shallower pitch, right? And I think that's what I'm gonna do. I went back and forth. I was convinced I was gonna start vertical, but I think I might just go like this because the lower the ceiling is, the better the heat is gonna be. The, the closer the convection process is gonna be to the pizza or whatever else you're cooking there. Less volume inside, less room to heat. Um, so I think it'll just make for a more efficient oven. Um, the other thing I noticed is on this tool, the pivot point is actually in front of the center axis from where it spins, right? So you have two options if you're, if you're using something like this. So the pivot points in front, whereas if I flipped it around and laid my bricks like this, the pivot point is behind the center. If it's behind, what that results in is more of a uh, peaked dome, whereas if it's in front, how I think I'm gonna do it, right? If it's in front, by the time those bricks come up, the top is gonna be relatively flat. So it, it, it won't be a perfect dome. It's gonna come up and then the top's kind of gonna flat out and then come down, which is gonna be more difficult to put that final piece in on the top. However, it's gonna keep the profile of it lower, more efficient cooking, I think. This, you know, I'm figuring all this out for you guys. So I think that's what I'm gonna do. And then I finalized the doors. I just gotta build those molds. So to make these arches, I'm just using the leftover plywood from the, the base mold. Did some rough drawings. I was using a thin piece of wood to bend to get the arch, but it didn't look very even. So I'm just gonna make a template out of cardboard just free-handed it looks pretty good to me i'll flip it over and trace it that way i know it's symmetrical 
I'll do, I'll make uh, both molds the same way. Once I have the fronts and the backs cut out, put some two by fours in there, put those on top. I don't want to glue anything. I'm just going to use screws. That's going to enable me to disassemble it. And I'll probably drill, uh, I will definitely drill a hole in the center so I can grab it and pull it out. It's as simple as that, nothing crazy. Here you go, super simple. Just three supports, holes on both sides so I can pull it out. Don't use glue, just screw them together. That's it. There's the big door, there's the little door. All right, this is something I didn't think of. So this front form, I made it so that the full nine inch bricks would rest on either side, but I actually need to use shorter bricks here for the front. They're actually gonna be like this right because the chimney is going to have to go somewhere around here so i can't use the full length brick so what i need to do is take this apart cut these down make this smaller but this is how those forms are going to go in inner opening and outer opening half inch difference between them <laughs> All right, today's the day. I'm gonna start working on the dome. This is the fire mortar or the refractory mortar I'm using. I got it from the same supplier that I got the bricks from. They only had one bag of it. So, and they don't carry it in stock. So I need to go, after I use all that, I gotta make my own. So you guys are gonna see that as well. All right, lessons learned after doing the first couple. You're definitely gonna want some little scrap pieces here to just shove in to take up some of that space so there's not as much mortar in there. All right, so I went halfway around in the back. Now I'm gonna start from this side, making sure my form fits. I'm gonna get this first block set and then work my way around back here. All right, so here we go. We have the first row is done. You gotta make sure you're scrubbing and cleaning this as you go so there's not too much of a mess. You wanna make sure your joints are even in the back because when you're looking in, that's what you're gonna see. So you can see here, I had to do a, a smaller cut there uh, to take up the space. So just plan for that. But as you're looking in, you want these bricks here kind of even. Um, it would actually be better if this smaller brick if, if you went like all the way around and then put the smaller brick there, but I didn't. So learn from my mistake. Using little pieces of scrap brick to fill these gaps so you're not using as much mortar. Um, now the next step, I'm gonna do the second row. I just need another cut like this, that'll get stacked. And then same thing. And you know, that'll be the case. It's gonna get weird when it starts coming around here, but I'm not gonna film this because I need to move fast. It's really hot, this stuff's drying out pretty quick, so. Second row, about to start, it's gonna be just like that. So at this point I ran out of the refractory mortar and I had to wait for supplies to show up so I could make my own so I moved on to doing the mortar infill work for the stone work that I did. Again, another lesson learned for you guys, just order all your materials up front so you're not skipping around from step to step like I was. This stone veneer work should be done last and you guys will see why. Um, I bought some mortar dye because I thought it would be cool to dye the mortar infill a little bit darker because I think it just gives it a cooler look 
in hindsight, it was just another step. It, it depends what kind of look you're going for. Again, I recommend if you guys are doing this, don't space your stones out like this. Just dry stack them and you can forgo this whole mortar infill gap filling process. It's a lot of extra work, but if you are gonna do it, what you see me doing here is after I've squirted it in there with that bag, let it set for maybe a half hour to an hour till it stiffens up, and then you come in with a brush and you kind of brush it clean and it gives it a nice clean look. All right, I finally got the ingredients I need. This is where I'm at on the dome. About to continue up. <sighs> this is what you need to make your own refractory mortar, supposedly. You need clay, masonry lime, or hydrated lime, Portland cement, and silica sand, which is this quick creek and pool filter stuff. These two things you can find readily available at Lowe's. These you cannot. I got this from the same place I got the bricks. Uh, it was the only bag they had. And then this I had to order online from Ace. It took a couple days to show up. So it's a three to one ratio for everything. Three parts sand and then one part everything else. Mix it all together. And then that's the refractory mortar I'll use to finish up the dome. After looking at this, I think what I want to do is drop this door, drop this opening a little bit lower looks a little bit higher than it needs to be you know I don't need to be putting pizzas that big in there and again the lower the opening of the door the uh, more heat it's gonna retain so I might as well just drop it down so it, it meets uh, to the top of those bricks so just made a little mark there and there and then what I'll do is I'll cut the difference off and then I'll cut this one as well all right, there we go. I cut it so you can see it. Met. The curve matches up to the top here. Um, put some little spacers under there so that when I do the arch, I can just pull those out and it's going to be easier to remove the form. So we are about ready to mix up the mortar and uh, get going with this dome. All right, I want to talk a little bit about these pieces here and how I got them. So I traced the same profile I did for the other ones with my little cardboard template, right? And then I took an angle finder and I held it up and I just kind of eyeballed what would be like a 90 degree angle here for those other bricks. I traced it on there. I did as many of the cuts like freehand as I could on uh, that saw. And then I used an angle grinder with a diamond blade to just get the rest of it. Uh, you can see it gets through most of it and then you just knock it off. This fire brick is very heavy in clay, so it breaks pretty easily. And you just bust it off and I'm pretty happy with how that turned out. Look at that, that'll sit right there. And those the bricks for the arch will just go right like that. That's pretty, pretty good. Can't be mad about that. All right, before I go any further, I think that my opening here is gonna to be too big. I know I cut it down before, but I cut it down even more. I think that's the size it should be. And that means I need to drop this brick down here. So I need to cut these off. I'll try to salvage this brick. I don't know if I'll be able to, I might just have to smash it all out and redo it, but. I don't want to continue and then be unhappy with the final product. So if I'm going to change it, now's the time. So that's what I got to do now. This inner arch here, you're not gonna see when the final product is done, so you don't need to worry too much about how it looks. You'll notice I put a piece of plastic in the bottom there. That's to prevent any squeeze out from falling inside the frame of the mold. 
I figured that's gonna make it easier to pull the mold out and then less clean up. So if you wanted to cover the whole top of that arch mold with like duct tape or something, that would probably be a good idea. As you come up on the back side of this arch, it's definitely the trickiest part of doing this dome. There's no measurements I can provide to you. This is all just custom cutting, just guess and check, figure it out. You'll be able to do it. It's not as hard as I thought it was. Just get a rough cut of the shape you think you need and then fill the rest with the mortar and then just keep going. So the way you finish this dome off is take a circular piece of plywood and prop it up with a scrap piece of wood on the inside, then take a couple handfuls of sand, throw that on there and shape the sand in a dome and that will allow you to rest those bricks on there. There it is, the dome is done. I didn't get it on film because my phone overheated and I wasn't about to stop and run inside to let it cool down. Doing the top was actually really easy. Just cut some angle pieces, get them all to fit together, wedge it in there. Just grab blobs of cement, whip it in there. Then you just pull the forms out of the bottom uh, from the inside. And there you are. Uh, it's pretty cool. I'll clear all that out later. The next step is I'm gonna work on the exterior arch. So I got this form here that's gonna go there and I need to work on the next arch so that's what I'm gonna do now Here's where we're at, getting ready to start on the chimney. So I'll take a half brick, that'll get stacked, put a bunch of mortar in the bottom and hold it up vertically, trace a template out of cardboard for a full brick that'll sit like that, front and back. All right, we got it all cleaned up. This is as far as I could get because I ran out of fire brick. I got to get a couple more, but you can see how the chimney's coming together. Inside is all cleaned out. Looking pretty good. Pretty, pretty good. Now the next step is I need to put this ceramic fiber insulation, which looks like that. Got it on Amazon. I'll put it, I'll link it in the video. It's two inches thick. That is gonna get wrapped around the whole dome. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some screws, I'm gonna pre-drill some holes, and then just put some screws in here as anchor points. So as I start layering on the wool, I can wrap some wire around it to hold it in place. And the whole thing will get covered in chicken wire, and then a layer of this perlite cement mix over top of that. All right, here's how it looks after all the insulation's on. It 
couple empty spots, but I'll just fill that with the perlite cement mix. Pretty simple. Good tip, take your pliers and just give it a little twist where you need to and that'll form it. Next step is about three inch thick layer of the perlite vermiculite or uh, perlite concrete mix. Perlite Portland cement mix rather. Same stuff I used at the base, but I'm gonna do a five to one ratio instead of a three to one like I did for the base. Before you use your pizza oven for the first time to actually make pizzas and get it fired up to full temp, you want to do a series of smaller to medium to larger curing fires to kind of dry everything out from the inside out. They say this is to help prevent cracking, you know, who knows how important it is, but I was just eager to see some fire on the inside. Now I could have built the custom metal door myself, but I figured it'd be a better use of my time if I just outsourced it to guys that do metal work professionally. So I gave a simple sketch to my boy John, who owns Crux Fab, operated out of Holly Ridge, North Carolina, and just had him do his thing. Got the door, I'm gonna tape the sides off. I'm gonna fill it with glass bottles so it's lighter, and then fill it with the same insulated uh, perlite cement mix there. This door is definitely overkill. You don't need it three inches thick. Um, you'd probably be fine with just a single steel door. I just wanted it to be as insulated as possible. I also recommend you stock up on firewood because you're gonna need a lot for this thing. I went to my boy, Jesse, 
who runs Port City Firewood out of Wilmington, North Carolina, and he hooked me up with some good wood. Yeah. Here I'm covering the concrete slab with another layer of stucco and then blending it up on the dome again just so everything matches. I replaced the stones up top, put a new block up there so it all matches and then give everything a fresh coat. I didn't film it but the last piece I did was just take half bricks, cut them in half and then mortar them in place across the front to cover that front edge. Alright guys, that does it. That's a wrap. This was a super long project. I made it harder on myself than it needed to be. If you're thinking about doing this, do it. Follow my steps, learn from my mistakes, make sure you watch my lesson learned video. Make sure you take advantage of the plans I have available. It's got a complete list of materials that you're going to need. If I was to do this again, I could knock this thing out in two weeks and save a couple hundred bucks. Please let me know if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Thanks for watching.